So this is part two of the video series and includes 12 practical tips for poster presentation. Number one, obey the rules. Whether you're presenting at a conference or for academic credit, you will absolutely have rules from the conference organizers or from the academic staff who've given you the assignment. Follow those rules. Make sure you stick to the orientation instructions and also the size instructions for the poster. In your case, you'll be looking at an A1 poster in portrait format. Follow on video show you how to make those changes in PowerPoint, both from the orientation and also from the custom size. Number two, when we read in English, we start at the top left. So organize your content accordingly. Make sure that it makes some sense and that there's a logical flow going from the top left over to the right and down through the page of the poster. Number three, use borders to arrange your content. So the idea here is to use boxes, which have maybe got a slight shading or color to allow them to be clearly distinguished. Organize your text and organize your content so that it's easy to follow. You should also include blank areas around those borders called negative space. These are really to help create an almost invisible second border around your content, which helps the reader work through the poster and increases the quality of your poster design. You need to minimize the amount of material that you have present within the poster and really aim to avoid any clutter in telling your visual story. A poster is a visual medium and you want to make sure that you have a clear visual narrative to tell that story. And if there's too much there, your story becomes lost. Okay, so here's an example from NASA. So you'd expect that they would have a well-funded, well-designed poster preparation program. Well, here you are, here's what that's output. It's bad, it's cluttered, it's busy. I don't know where to start. I don't know where the main message is. This is not something to aspire to. Okay, it's a less is more situation for a poster. You don't have to put everything in. This looks like someone took a written document and just took chunks of text out of it and just pasted it together and called it a poster. That's not how you do it. You need to customize the material you put into the poster to tell that visual story. And it's really important that you have graphical elements. So tip number five, you need roughly 40 to 50% of your poster which is made up of graphical elements. So charts, tables, pictures, images. There's any number of different things that you can include here. And PowerPoint has a great function called SmartArt, which will enable you to create flowcharts and box type arrangements of text and process diagrams to really take something that might be potentially just a list of text and create something more dynamic and engaging from a visual perspective for the reader. Tip number six, be on your guard for pixelation and poorly pixelated images. When you take an image uh, to use in a written piece of material, it doesn't really get blown up very much. So you don't have to worry about if the, if the quality of the image is a bit shaky. You've probably all seen in lectures and in PowerPoints that sometimes the images look really bad on the screen, but don't look too bad in the handouts. That's because you scale them up on the screen to such a big size that any deficiencies in the image become very obvious. So here's two examples here. The one on the left is a low res version and the one on the right is a high res version. You can see there's marked differences between these. Okay, and you can also start to make out the pixelation on the left hand size, side. So this is something that you do really need to keep an eye on and make sure whenever you're pasting something in, it's pasted in at a good enough resolution so that when it's at that poster size, it still looks the way you want it to. Tip number seven, crop your pictures. You don't necessarily need to show everything that's in every picture that you want to add on. You may need to focus on a particular element of a picture. And you can do that very conveniently in PowerPoint using the crop tool. So if you select an image, right click it, you'll get this crop symbol appearing and you can click on that and when you click on it, it will trigger thicker blacker li black lines to appear around the border of the image. And you can see those indicated by the orange arrows. And if you drag those, you 
you, what you're essentially doing is highlighting the part of the image that you want to display for a PowerPoint, not necessarily destroying the rest of the image, just highlighting what you want it to display. And when you leave go and click elsewhere on the slide, the pieces that you've, you've removed will disappear. So if you look at the bottom right, you can see there's kind of a grayed out area. That piece won't show up when I click away. Tip number eight, it's a visual story that you want to tell. So make the story obvious. So make sure that anything, anytime you have an image, anytime you have a chart, that it's clearly labeled, that a chart should have enough label that it's understandable on its own. You use arrows and images where required to highlight significant and important features and that any abbreviations are also covered in the legend rather than somewhere else in the poster. So if I just put up something and ask you to find Waldo, it would be very difficult. You'd have to look at it for a while before you find him. But if I highlight him with a, an arrow, then you know exactly where the important feature of that image is. So it's the same logic for any scientific content. Highlight the important content and make sure that it's easy to find for the reader. Tip number nine. Yes, references are required, but don't put too many references in. It's really just the key references that support it. If some of the work has been published before, absolutely that needs to go in. If some of the material has been reviewed or presented in another conference, for example, you would put that in, but you're probably looking at maybe half a dozen references. At many conferences, what people will do is have a mini version of their poster printed out on A4, which might include additional references on the back but it's not the same as a classical academic document because there's a person standing next to the poster so they can answer questions about where a fact has come from. Tip number 10, your fonts need to be big enough that they're easily legible from a meter away. That's very difficult to manage on a small computer screen. So one of the tips is to increase the scale, the zoom function on your PowerPoint to 100% so you can get an, a view of what it looks like when it's full size. And then push yourself about a meter away from your screen and see can you read it easily. If you have a big TV screen at home, you can plug the laptop or tablet into the TV and have a look and see what it looks like at a size more similar to full size. So the general guideline would be that the title of your poster should be about 70 points now bear in mind, normal text is 10, 11, 12 points. So it's quite big. Um, section headings should be around 40 point and section text within those sections. So within those organized bordered text boxes should be about 28 points. It's hard to give a precise number because there are some differences between um, different fonts. And speaking of fonts, you should always use a very clean, crisp, sharp edged font sans serif font. So things like Arial, Calibri, Verdana, not Times New Roman or anything that has any fancy um, shapes to the font. It needs to be really simple newspaper headline type font. Tip number 11. Consider your contrast and your choice of colours very carefully. This goes for the main body of the poster and wouldn't include, for example, pictures of cells or pictures of um, the outdoors or the environment, but it does apply to charts and tables. Less is more in this case. And the analogy that I always use is makeup. You want to put on makeup that doesn't make you look too clownish. So you definitely don't want to have a poster that is reminiscent of the lady on the right, but you do want to make a poster that's simplistic and classy and professional looking. Okay, so minimize the amount of colors that you're going to use. Typically, you'll have a background color for the poster. So that's one color that will be white or some pale color. Then you will also have a main body text color. So that's two colors, a highlight or a text color. So that might be black for main text and red for highlighting text. So that's three. And then you'll probably have two more kind of colors that can be incorporated as well. So that would be a total of four, maybe five colors. So that means you can include those in graphs and charts 
and it really makes your poster look more professional if you're using exactly the same colors for all the different elements. Obviously as well, this doesn't um, count for logos because logos have to be presented as they are. Now contrast is also important. And here's an example of a really terribly contrasted poster. You may not be able to see that there's text here, but there is lots of text. And when I manipulate the image, you can see that there is actually material there. And it was deliberately designed to show that it's really important to consider that contrast thing. And also to think about the contrast on your computer screen is not the contrast in reality when you print a poster. Now, I know things are slightly different this year for you guys, but remember that the fidelity of the printed colors will not be the same as the fidelity of the colors used on your screen unless you're really conscientious about calibrating your colors. Okay, so just easiest way to avoid that is to look high contrast. Dark text, like background, minimum number of colors, you're sorted. Tip number 12, come up with an interesting title, something that stimulates or is a little bit provocative, something that catches the reader's attention. At some conferences, there can be many thousands of posters being displayed. So how do I know which poster is the interesting one? If it has a dry, boring academic title, I'm probably less likely to go looking at it unless I'm super interested in that area. So you need to catch the attention of your audience. The title of the poster does not have to be the same as your previous lit review or data analysis titles. Okay, it can be something that summarizes your overall view. It can be a statement. It can be a question where you answer the question in the poster. It's the kickoff point for your narrative. So um, the follow-on videos from this are related to more practical walkthroughs of how you actually achieve things like customized poster size, how you use smart art, how you organize things and so on.